Do you think that Kanye West going to talk to Donald Trump about Mr. Hoover was a good look or a bad look? I say this here. Anybody that will stand up and go to the White House and speak for somebody that's been locked up at that time, I think he was locked up for almost, he was uh, 40 some years. Yes, I, I, I applaud him for that. However, they did the concert. Since that time, now we got to ask ourselves, what has Kanye done? What has he done? The lawyer that, the Bill Cosby lawyer that's representing Mr. Mr. Larry Hoover now, yes, Kanye has, uh, 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 I think he helped fund that. You know, so I'm not speaking on facts, but these, these, so I'm not speaking on the things that I know firsthand. So, don't shoot me, y'all. Don't kill me for, for saying this here. But I believe he was the one to help fund and help pay for the lawyer, Jennifer. So he's done that, but he's what where they at now? Mm. You think uh some of the proceeds? I know some of the proceeds went to the foundation. Do you think some of the proceeds went to the family? I I don't know. I can't speak on that, bro. So by me not under, by me not knowing the details of it, I won't give. I won't even give my opinions on that. You know what I'm saying? Because now I could be making a, a ignorant outburst, and I don't want to make no ignorant outburst on something that I'm not knowledgeable of. So I don't. I don't know if it went to it. If it, I would hope the family would receive some out of if they using the man image and they getting paid off off of him. Quite. I would hope that the family got something. Do you consider yourself like a spokesperson for growth and development? No, I'll consider myself as a, a loyal, outstanding member of this organization. And when I say outstanding, everybody can call themselves outstanding. But then you got to be able to ask yourself, what, what is the work that they doing? What work are they doing? No, I'm not a spokesperson. I'm just a I'm a I'm a brother of the struggle damn, that believe in righteousness. What do you think about like Facebook groups that uses Mr. Hoover's name? I look at that as being ignorance. Ignorance only meaning having a lack of knowledge. I guess they're trying to show their uh their allegiance. But just by putting somebody's name and an image on something don't necessarily mean that that's you uh, you showing your allegiance to them. That's like you down for them or something. So what I do, even in these groups, I try to get up in there and I try to teach them. I try to. That's why I, I place uh, information inside of these groups to help teach them, to help lead them the right way. Because a lot of our, even a lot of the, the so-called uh, elder statesmen out here, they are misleading. They mislead themselves. So I try to I try to uh, get the people's the truth and the facts on everything and try to lead them in the proper direction where they, they can go see it themselves. Do you have an example of an elder statesman that may have misled some people in one particular scenario or another? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's Ike Taylor. Ike did a lot of good. Don't, don't, I don't want to get this twisted. Ike did a lot of good in the beginning, in the, in, in the foundational years of this organization. However, in the mid eighties, Ike moved on about his business. Ike decided to go do other things that was, that was unbecoming on what he was supposed to be doing. So he went off and did other things. In the, in the latter years of his life, because Ike wasn't around, man, for almost 30, 40 years. He ain't been around. But in the latter part of his life, he has come back. And with him coming back, people look at him on based on his past accomplishments from 81 on back or 82 on back. Because we know that in 1981, that's when a new idea came into effect. So let's just say 83. So from 83 on back to, to the 60s. But if you look on up, we going on up into 84 all the way up. Then you got to ask what was being done, what, what, what was that, where you was at, and everything. 
when the youth needed you? Where were you? Where were you? The same person that aligned up with Austin Foster and the, to, to scheme him out of money? Then you get this dude and making him thinking he's somebody more than what man. You's a rat, Austin. You know you're a rat. So wait a minute. You think that Ike Taylor is scheming Austin Foster out of Iowa out of money? I'm not saying he's scheming him out of money. Let me rephrase that. Yeah, he's been he been getting stipends to come down to speak, and they've been paying his way, his hotel fees, his food fees, getting him a few dollars here, a few dollars there. Yeah, he, they've been doing all that. Man, I don't knock that because, okay, you, you got that coming. But Austin is a rat. There's no way that you should even be communicating with a rat, and you know this person is a rat. So why Austin, you, why you communicate? Go ahead. There's no reason to communicate with him. There's no reason for me to communicate with Austin Foster. What do me and Austin Foster have in common? Listen, bro, let me say this here. My brother, my blood brother, I went and done a 30-year prison sentence for my blood brother. My mama taught me and my family and my, and my mother and my father taught us, man, you don't ever open your mouth. You don't ever say nothing about nothing. I went and did a 30 year prison sentence for my brother. And I never opened my mouth. I went to trial. I got found guilty and I went to prison. And not one time was did I ever hold any ill contempt towards my brother because I was taught that way. All right. So Austin Foster, man, for those who don't know, Austin Foster is a white guy, right? Yes. Do you think that a white guy can hold weight? In a black organization, man, you got brothers that can't even hold weight in a in 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 that organization. Now, let me say this here: one of my closest friends and my brother, man, his name is Chuck G. Chuck G is inside the feds right now, man. Chuck got like two years left before he come home, man. And Chuck is a European. Chuck is a real dude, man. It don't matter about your color. It deals with your character. Your color don't mean nothing because you got a lot of soft, weak dudes that look just like you. That's because, but now you got to ask yourself, with you basing that question like that, it ain't been the, no Europeans that has been snitching. Okay. Let's look at FBG Duck right now, right? How many Europeans jumping up on that stand, man, that's in, the, that's in that was rolling with them that's up there telling? Is Trench's news here European? I don't think so. If the other little boy, Butter, is here European? I don't think so. They're going to look just like you, man. Is Anthony McIntyre a European? Nah. Raheem? No. Jimmy D? No. Vic? No. Marvell? No. Willow? No. Thomas London? No. Lionheart? No. Highsmith? No. So it ain't got nothing to do with no color. It ain't got nothing right. to do with that. Right, because I met Austin Foster and I met um, Ike Taylor and I thought that they really had love for Mr. Hoover and they had love for the organization that was built while Mr. Hoover was a youth. And um, I didn't feel like they were misrepresenting Mr. Hoover. I felt as if they had genuine love for Hoover. So what's the what's the issue with you and those two brothers? I don't have no issue with them personally. I ain't got no personal issue with them. So you're dealing with your feelings. I'm not dealing with the feelings, bro. That's the one thing I tell people. Don't deal with your feelings on what you cause. Uh, uh, you looking at a lookalike substance. Somebody can walk up to you with something in the bag. It might look like it's some heroin or some cocaine and some flour or something. That's a lookalike substance. So just because some look like some don't necessarily mean that it is. So if you are, if you have genuine love for a person, man, where have you been? Where have you been for 35, 40 years? Where were you at? Well, let me ask when, you this. 
Let yeah. me ask you this, right? Because um, I think in uh in the earlier um not an interview that we did, but a show that we did, you spoke on Ike Taylor doing drugs. Is that correct? Come on, man. Everybody know that's a everybody know that's a fact, man. That ain't that ain't even that ain't even nothing uh to be talked about, man. That ain't that ain't no secret. That's not a secret. That's why he wasn't around. So how can you have love for someone or something when you when your love is to what you putting up your nose or putting in your lungs or putting in your arm? That's your love. That's what you love. Man, bro, I've been on. I, man, listen, bro. I've been through the rigors with this here, bro. I was in the Federal Bureau of Prison with cancer running through my body, bro. People to tell you. And I never, not one time, did I stop and abandon the struggle. I did not abandon the struggle, bro. I kept it going. I kept the business going. And I told the brothers, I said, man, don't take me off the roster. Because if y'all have me to sit back because I'm sick, what's going to happen is I'm going to die. Because I ain't going to have nothing to look forward to. Only thing I'm going to be focused on is, the, is, is my illness. I don't want to focus on my illness. I want to focus on what I can give back to the brothers to help them along the way. I'm not going to put my illness before the, the organization. I'm not going to put no drug in front of the organization. I'm not doing that. And I tell people right now, if it ever came a chance or came a time when I got to pick or choose between you and the org, bro, you're going to lose. Mm. You're going to lose. Right. And um, I do believe that you did talk to me about that situation. And you said that they had you in, in the infirmary. And um, some brothers came and got you and took you up out of there. Could you tell us about that? All right. When I was in uh, Buckner, I was in uh, FMC Buckner, Federal Medical Center in Buckner, North Carolina. And I was in the health service, what they call it in the feds. I was in the health service. And the brothers came and got me. They come and got me. Like, man, bro, come on, bro. Come on. All right, let's go. Let's go. That was the greatest feeling that I could feel, man. Irigas Parks Bay. My man, my man, listen, he was there, bro. He was there. Me and him and some more brothers, we wind up going to the shoe, which is the special housing unit, which is segregation. He'll tell you, you know, Reed. He would tell you that I found out that I had cancer when they took my blood while I was in the shoe. Now, mind you now, we under investigation for something. And I'm the one when they when the SIS called us back. There, I told everybody, y'all keep y'all mouth shut. Everybody, y'all just be quiet. I went back there and took the weight. I went back there, think I'm lying, ask him. I went back there and say, man, they none of them had nothing to do with nothing. And at this time, I didn't even know that I was sick. I say, none of them got nothing to do with nothing. I did it. Found out I got cancer. They let all us out to shoot. They let all us out. Everybody got out. A couple months later, come down, boom, I got cancer. I went in the kitchen. Mind you now, you got a chomo, a child molester, sitting at our table. They'll tell you about this here too. This, these facts, bro. I come in the kitchen. I'm not finna wait on nobody to tell me to do something that I know that needs to be done. I tell dude to get up, man. You can't sit here. Go somewhere else. Man, tell me he ain't getting up. It was on a Wednesday, which is hamburger, hamburger and French fry day. Man, I beat the man all upside his head with my tray. Man, you don't get up out of here and went back to the shoe. I don't care, bro, when it comes to what needs to be done, bro. These facts, man. These ain't no, this ain't no, no, no BS stories, man. People to tell y'all this here, this is what it was. Why did a chomo feel like he, he could sit at the table? Because, you know, you get some chomos who think they tough. You get some of them child molesters that think they tough. They might be some freaks. But some of them think they like, man, I'm not, man, you ain't telling me nothing. Okay, all right. Watch this. 
Watch this. And I'm not going to ask nobody to do something that I know is supposed to be done. I'm going to do it. 